Hey guys, welcome back to the e-commerce with Golang project series. We were working with our database functions and now we'll be working with, with buy item from cart function. This function is not very straightforward because there are a lot of things that we need to do here. So uh, the cart, as you know, is attached to a user. So we have to get all the items in his cart. We have to find the total of that. Then we have to create an order because an order is basically uh you know purchase of the product so we'll have to create an order from here that's what buy means and uh, after the order is created we have to kind of empty his cart as well right so a lot of things so fetch the cart of the user find the cart to be, um, create an order for order with the items and empty up the cart. So these four things we'll be doing, not necessarily in this order, they will, uh, you know, the order is going to change here and there. But these are the things that we need to do, right? So I'll keep these things here just as a pointer so that you know that these are things that we will be touching upon in this function. And we might have to do a couple of more things. So firstly, uh, context takes in user collection <clears throat> type mongo dot collection and we obviously need the user ID like I said the user uh, is you know important because that's the, uh, the card belongs to the user and we might return an error if there's an error we will return an error from this function all right first things first we have access to the user ID then let's do this let's Say primitive dot object ID from hex take the user ID and then capture this in a variable called ID. There could be an error also out here, so let's handle the error. So we'll say error is not equal to nil. We'll say log dot print ln error. And we we'll return error, the user ID is not valid. Okay. Now we need a way to work with the order. Okay, this entire struct called order. So I'll say where get card items is a variable I'm creating of type models dot user. And at the same time, I'll create a variable called order cart which is of type models dot order. Make sense? So one variable we have created for order, one variable I've created for user. These are two things that we need to work with out here. So uh, the order, the order card order has a couple of things like it has the order ID. It has ordered at and it has the order card. These three things are important. The order ID will be created. Uh, now we're creating an order, right? We are checking out. This is called as a checkout process. The cart, we're checking it out. So the order has to be created new, the order ID. So we'll say order cart dot order underscore ID is going to be primitive dot new object ID. And order cart dot ordered at will be equal to time dot now the timestamp for now okay so we've taken care of order id taken care of order at let's take care of, care of order cart which is supposedly um, a slice of type product users okay so just remember that so that means we'll say order cart dot uh, order underscore cart is of is a slice of type models dot product user comma zero and you'll say order cart dot payment underscore method dot cod is equal to true going back to your models again for cart order ID you've taken care of, order cart, order that, right, which is the timestamp right now. 
And then your payment method, you've taken care of that also. Okay. So you know that the user card, right, the user card for that particular user is going to contain multiple product user, uh, you know, data, product user data, data. So all of them need to be added. To add those, we will be running an aggregate function using obviously group. We'll use group to add that. So firstly, I'll say unwind. Unwind basically um, a slice or an array. It can unwind it, right? Uh, the unwind method. And it will then uh, give us access to each of these values that, that we'll be able to access very easily after unwind. So unwinding is very important. So we'll say key is unwind. Key means that what function of MongoDB are going to, are you going to use right now? The value is json.d primitive dot a and to the, your unwind you will pass some variables. So the kind of variables you have to pass is the path. Path is where you have to tell yet what exactly uh, do you want to unwind. That's what you have to pass out here. Okay. So you're saying that the path that I want to pass, the value of my path is user card. So I want to basically unwind my user card. User card is a slice. I want to unwind it because I want to be able to access those values. So that's why it makes sense. Close it here. The other thing that I want to pass here. Uh, so where, where are they getting passed? You might be wondering. So let me show you that. So they're basically getting passed in user collection dot aggregate. Uh, sorry. CDX comma Mongo dot pipeline. They're getting passed here, unwind comma, grouping, right? So you first want to unwind and then only you'll be able to group. And this is what you're doing out here in your aggregation function. So this is why we need to create our grouping also, right? So we'll say in grouping. So grouping stage is a very important stage in MongoDB. So for grouping, you'll say bson.d. The key or the function that you want to run is Sorry, this was supposed to be inside here. So the key is dollar group. The value is this one dot D uh, primitive dot E. The key is ID and the value is dollar underscore ID. And then here you'll pass the key to be total. Value is this one dot D primitive dot E. And essentially we are using the dollar sum um, function given to us by aggregate to find the sum of the Sorry, user card dot price. User card dot price. Okay. So let me repeat what's happening again. Unwind without unwinding, you'll you won't get access to every single uh, user's price, user card's price. The user card has multiple items, multiple products, and they all have a price. To be able to access that easily, you want to be you want to unwind it because earlier it exists in a slice format, right? So multiple multiple products exist in the user card. And then what you're do, what you're gonna do is you wanna group them and group them with ID. That's why you say dollar ID. To group them, you find the total, and the total is basically going to be the sum of all the uh, products in the user card. Okay. And that's when you wanted to you want to send it to the user collection. Now out here, you want to capture that in a variable, right? You need some variable to capture it in. So I'm going to call it current results. And I'm going to say CTX dot done. Okay. And let's also handle this error out here. So we'll say if error is not equal to nil, we panic and print out the error. 
now there's a lot more remaining out here there's a lot of a uh, lot more things that we need to do so we have found the card for the user i think yeah we have done that we find the card total and now we have to do these two things and a little more things here and there so what i want to do is i want to you know keep this video here so that it's easy to digest i don't want to extend this video anymore and the next video we'll uh, you know keep working in this function buy item from card and we'll extend this function thank you for watching do subscribe to the channel so that you know whenever the next video comes out for this series and i'll see in the next video